Okay, um, so let's start. Um, I, I, my, my idea was to present you 10 ideas. Um, I call it ideas or principles. Um, what we can do to make a learning experience in an online context more attractive and, and more effective. Um, and afterwards, I, I would be very glad to discuss that with you if you agree with me or if you have other ideas that could be interesting to in introduce in that. I start with my my first principle, my first idea, and I I hope you can read that. Okay, atmosphere. So it seems very very, uh, very simple atmosphere, um, and uh, we we always want to create a good atmosphere in learning experiences. But I think in an online context, is even more important, and we have to pay as teachers. We have to pay a lot of attention to that, and uh, we have to invert more time for for that so the, we know that the first seconds count most um that we have to create an atmosphere of trust where we have to know each other also in an online context we have to create a kind of group spirit and um, i think um i have to make sure as teacher that my students feel relaxed and that they have fun together um when i want to um when i want them to learn something um in in language learning i um i'm a very friend of uh, working with warm-ups icebreakers um i'm sure that you know a lot of them there are hundreds of ideas um, about icebreakers and i think you can introduce that in in a very simple way um when you're working in a video conference you for i give you an example if i i want to work with emotion for example i can use the chat and i can just um write a word to uh, Ramona, for example, in my in the private chat. And um, for example, an emotion like surprise or sad, and she has to do a, a pantomime. And you all have to guess what she's doing. Um, that's just a little idea. Uh, another idea would be the emoji game. Um, I, I ask Ramona to give you an emoji and all of us have to, to imitate this emoji. And, that's first of all having fun and afterwards we can work with that it's some um, kind of vocabulary work we can we can do with that um, or another option a variation of this is i can i can show you something like this or like some, some some funny images and i can ask you um i now ask you how how do you feel today and what cat corresponds to your feelings now you can if you like, you can uh, give me the answer in the chat now. You can choose a, a number. I always like the eight. <laughs> That's a really cool cat. Or um, you can just use the, the comment function in, in, in Zoom, um, if, if you know that. Um, let's see if somebody, yeah, the six. OK, six and the one. Yeah, with a glass of wine is also cool. <laughs> OK, just to give you an, an idea. That's. That for me, that's also create a good atmosphere. So my my second principle is presence. So, um, and presence in an online way. So I, I think we have to make sure um, that we we have to be, that we create a social presence. And social presence has two dimensions in in this meaning. Students have to feel present, so they have to feel inside the, their learning experience in an online context, and that's not so um, so, so easy because all nonverbal signals um, that we use uh, regularly in face-to-face in -face context we don't have in, in online context often. But also teachers has to be present in in this online context, and. There are different reasons why teachers are present or not present for, for their students. Um, that can be the technical setup, um, how large is my screen, how good is my sound. Sound is always more, more important than, than the image. Um, we know that from, from video um, research. Uh, it, it has also, it, it depends also on, on digital competences on um, how, um, how I use tools. Tools and technique for me, they have to disappear. So if if I don't feel that they are there, um, it's it's a, um, a present experience. Um, a third thing is that students want to be seen in in an online context. Um, so I have to make sure that uh, all what I do. Um, I have to see my student and what they do, um, and that's in, in a video conference is very obvious. Uh, but I have more communication channels than in 
in face-to-face -face contexts. So I have to look at the chat. I have to look at perhaps in a collaborative, uh, collaborative board I use. Um, if I'm using a forum, an asynchronous forum, I have to be present as teacher as well. So I have to make sure that um, when when we, we are working in asynchronous, uh, with asynchronous elements, I have to be present also. That's what I mean with social presence in, in online contexts. Number three is the home base. So I'm, for me, it's extremely important always to have like kind of kind of a home base. Also in, in, in the physical classroom, I am working with a digital home base uh, in, a, in an online context uh, that may be a learning management system like Ramona presented uh, as the, the Elias platform. And the idea behind that is that my students always have to know where to go when they need some information. And it has to be very clear. So I, I don't want to use a lot of a whole, a whole range of, of tools. And everybody will be confused uh, where to find the information, the homework, um, my, my last presentation, etc. But it has to be one home base. Um, that's, that's the idea of that. Uh, if I don't have a learning management system, it's no problem. So I can just share a link to a digital whiteboard, for example, a Padlet. Um, but I have to work with that on um, on the whole course, or not not to change every second. Or I can uh, have my uh, chat group as as home base. It doesn't matter. Um, it's important just to keep it simple and accessible for for my students. And so the next principle would be number four, reduction. It's a didactic principle, it's, we all know. Um, in, in the context of online learning, I think it, that's also something we, we have to think in an organizational um, dimension. So uh, we have to keep things simple, uh, less is often more. Um, students should not be busy with tools, but busy with learning. Um, and if I use tools, um, so it's a bit the same than like uh, what I said with, with the home base uh, thing. I, I'm a very friend of using integrated tools. If I am working with Zoom, um, first of all, I try to, to get the most out of Zoom. So I'm using the chat, the whiteboard, etc. cetera. Um, if I use external tools, I can do that. It's, it's, it's okay, but I, I always have to know why I do that. So. Every tool I use, I have to reflect on myself um, why I'm, I will use it. That the reason can be that I want to activate someone and, and I can do that with the tools um, already known um, in, for example, from Zoom, uh, or I want to surprise someone with something, something new, um, or um, I want to realize a task that I cannot realize with my integrated tools. If the whiteboard in Zoom doesn't work very well, so I, I just get another one, it's no problem. Uh, but if I have a good whiteboard, um, it's, there is no use to, uh, to add another external tools, which will confuse my, my students. Number five, authentic. Um, so authenticity is something um, important always in learning context. Uh, teachers often believe in online contexts that they have to let off like fireworks um, and use a lot of a whole bunch of things and blinky things. And um, I'm a friend of um, more to, to uh, think about what uh, fits with my personality as teacher. I have to feel fine with um, things I use, with tools I use. If I am a person that does not, uh, who does not like uh, games in classrooms, for example, um, perhaps it's not the best idea to do every five seconds a Kahoot or uh, to work on Gather Town. If I'm a gaming person, um, it can, it may be a very good idea. So that's, um, that depends on your personality. And I think it has to fit also in with your digital competencies. You have to feel uh, on your own level, um, not work with things that are so complicated that you don't feel um, authentic with it. Um, your students will, will know it and you will feel not very good. And they, um, at the end, it's not a good experience for, for all of you. Uh, <clears throat> number six, um, I call it real life. So we, we are in a digital context and real life, what, what do I mean with that? 
we have the huge advantage in e-learning that we um, that students are learning in a private environment, in a private context. And I think we should use that. Um, we should use the um, all your all your rooms where you are and what I can see in the video um, for personalized learning. So um, one example for that is uh, I can I can do the color game. I don't know if you you know that color game. Um, if I'm working, for example, with vocabulary in uh, with kitchen vocabulary, I can tell you. Hey, just go to your kitchen now and get something green out of your fridge. So everybody is moving, everybody is um, working with, with words and with, with um, non-digital stuff, with physical stuff. Um, another um, option would be to invite a guest from a foreign country if I'm um, doing uh, online uh, uh, language uh, teaching uh, with foreign, uh, foreign languages. I can work with people uh, via video conferences. It's so easy. I can work with people in um, from foreign countries. I give you one example from the Adult Education Center in, in Nuremberg. We have one one Spanish teacher who moved back to Valencia. Now he's doing um, his job in Valencia. For us, that's extremely positive because he brings something like uh, authentic in in our course program. We can. Um, People in Nuremberg can uh, can study Spanish with somebody sitting in a cafe or in a bar in in Valencia. So it's just just another uh, another dimension how to bring some some real life in in foreign language teaching. Number seven is um, I have to know my students. Um, why I have to to know them. Um, one, one dimension is I need to know their technical setup. Um, I have to know if they are working with two screens or with a mobile phone. Um, that's a, really a difference in, in what I can use, what methods I can use. I have to know their digital competencies. Um, that also is important to know uh, with what kind of tools I work, uh, with um, the complexity, uh, how complex my methods can be. And I have to know what they like. Uh, what they have fun with. Um, how can I? How can I know that? One one um, way to that is to to get feedback from them. Um, so the easiest thing thing is just ask um, again and again and again. I, I think it's extremely important in online contexts to to get constantly feedback. Um, I can do. I can ask close questions. Um, and, and get the answer from, from my students. I can use opinion polls um, with an integrated tools or with an audience response uh, tool like Mentimeter, Participify, you own that. Um, or there are a million of other methods to get feedback from my students. In my experience, when, when we are talking with experienced teachers, they often say, no, I, I know my group. Um, I know how they feel. I know um, where if they they understood what I what I said, and I would say the opposite. They don't. Um, above all, in the online context, you you have to ask that. And uh, although it may may seem a bit uh, a bit too much. Number nine, um, I called learning scenario. So. Um, in what what we've seen in uh, during the pandemic is uh, that we we did a lot of copy and paste from uh, from physical classroom to video conference um, from face to face to to um, to online settings. So the advantage in e-learning, we Sonia mentioned mentioned that at the beginning is that we can combine synchronous and asynchronous elements, and um, that also depends on the target group. But we have to. To make sure that we can combine that, if it's possible, uh, that's um, that's uh, surely true. But the other um, thing that is true is also that at the end, it's not the question if we do it face to face or online or in a video conference or blended. Um, we know from research that um, what matters uh, um, very much is the personality of a teacher and a good didactic concept in itself. So um, that's the first thing I have to ma make sure. And after that, I'm, I'm thinking about my, my scenario and how to combine synchronous and asynchronous elements. And the last thing, 
number 10 is surprise. So um, we know from neuroscience that students keep things in mind that attract their attention. And perhaps you will remember me only because of my shabby um, yellow prompt cards and um, not of what I, what I said to you. But that's okay. It's also a way to, um, to remember things and to learn something. And so my suggestion is just make sure that you can surprise your students at least one time per lesson. Okay, that were my, my 10, 10 ideas about how to create um, a good learning experience and principles that count in online contexts more than in, in um, face to face contexts. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I would be very glad to get in, in touch with you and discussion with you.